Hello, happy Friday, or should I say happy Movember. I'm growing it out. It's a weak attempt, I know, 11 days of growth this is, but today I want to talk about how to create a triage or a claim ticket step within Halo PSA. I'm going to demonstrate what that looks like for those who don't know. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see it, and I'm going to make a new ticket. I'm just going to pick somebody. I'm going to call this a uh, YouTube test. I'm then going to categorize it. So this is a technical incident. There is a fault with a piece of hardware and it's a laptop and then submit it. Now, every ticket that is manually created or comes in via an email or an automation will sit in my environment in unassigned tickets. And what you must do here before you can start working on the ticket is triage it or to claim it. So in my environment, I'm just going to click the claim button. What happens there in this environment is you then have a triage step, which is basically is to make sure the ticket is categorized correctly. Now, you might say you've just done that, Connor. Why are you going to do that again? Well, in reality, the majority of tickets will come in via email or the self-service portal, and they won't have this information captured. So you can look at the ticket and say, "Ah, oh, YouTube test, no idea. Just going to put it as other, right? But in reality, what you would do is if someone's got a fault with a laptop, you would say, right, there's a fault with a laptop. I'm going to categorize what I know, and I will finish the categorization at the end of the ticket. And again, this is all for reporting. So now I can go ahead and click Save on that triage step. And that will then automatically move the ticket from unassigned. It will assign it to me because I'm the one claiming the ticket and will set the status of acknowledge. So let me show you how you do this. First thing you need to do is go to configuration. You need to go to ticket, you need to go to actions and we need to make a new action. I'm gonna delete this and recreate this. I'm gonna create an action called triage. Now, the outcome description, this might be wrong verbiage here, but I think it is triage, I want terminology here, but it doesn't matter. The outcome is triage, the button name is the thing you press on, the thing you see says triage. Sequence in the list, this is a sequence from left to right. So one being the closest to the left and a thousand being to the right. I'm gonna press one because I want this to be the first button on the row of buttons that you press. The most important part of any button or action creation in Halo PSA is the icon. I've spent way too much time in here going through all these icons. Today, we are going to have a picture of a cloud. Why not? Next, we have a few options. Action button is visible. Well, yeah, because if it's not visible, you can't see it. Therefore, you can't click it. Action visible. Action is visible outside of workflows. I'm going to say no, because I want this to be the first step of a workflow and only appear at the first step of the workflow. So I'm going to say it is not visible outside of workflows. We don't need to make a system use in this video, but I'll explain very quickly what it is. System uses are fantastic in Halo. System use means when you press a button, it can trigger something in the back end, like it can trigger an email to an agent, it can create a child ticket, it can create an invoice or log it to a vendor. It can even send webhooks. So there's some clever people out there in the world, more intelligent than I am, or have more time, one of the two I can't figure it out. But they've basically made webhooks to do various things. So one of the friends that I have has made a webhook that sends to his label printer and he has a print label button. Um, MSP Automator, who I've seen on a few of the forums, has made an automation to create an account in Azure. Um, again, if you know how to handle webhooks and, and want to get involved in that, you can have an action in Halo do pretty much anything. But for today, I'm going to say no system use. Here's a quick action. I'm going to put yes in this one to show you how this works. Typically for a triage, I would say no. But basically, a quick action means when I press that button, don't make me do anything, just do the action. I then want to change the status. So I want to say when I click triage or claim or acknowledge, I want it to go to the status acknowledge. This is because if you keep it as default, it will still be new. Where in my opinion, if you're claiming or triaging a ticket, the assumption is you've read and seen the ticket, you're just not working on it yet. So I have three states, new, you've not seen it, you've no idea, it just sits there new, acknowledged, Yes, I've seen it, I'm not working on it. And then in progress, waiting on customer basically means you're working on the ticket. Response behavior, we want to say do not respond. This basically means I don't want to email the customer. I don't want to tell the customer that I've triaged the ticket. They don't need to know, they don't care. If environment, your customers do need to know at every step of the workflow, you can say, yeah, respond automatically. Send them an email. Today, I'm going to say don't respond. That's all I need to do on this details page. I don't want it to invoke a new workflow. I don't want to add a to-do list. I don't want to, you know, run a call script when I when I do this, okay? What I do want to do though, 
is I want to change the agent. So when I click on this action, I want it to change the agent from no change, which is unassigned, to me, agent logging or doing the action. And all I want to do now is go ahead and click save. So currently that button exists in the system. It's not going to do anything. We now need to tie this into our workflow. So what you need to do now is head down to workflows, incident management workflow. Now, if you're wondering where these workflows are invoked from, if you go to ticket types, incidents, for instance, this is an incident ticket, and the default is start this workflow. So whenever an incident ticket is created, whether it's manually or done via an email, it will start the incident management workflow, which is here. And I want to edit this. I'm going to delete stage one and make it with you now to show you how this works. So what you need to do is by default, you'll have two stages. You'll have, here's all the things I can do on the ticket. Here's the ticket closed. I want to add a step in before all of this. So I'm going to add a step and I'm going to call this triage ticket. I'm going to say this is the start of the workflow and I'm going to say this is stage one. I'm then going to say, right, what buttons do I want to show at the start of this workflow? Well, I only want to show two. I want to show the triage button that we just made together. And I also want to do the reassign. I think I've renamed it as assign. Yeah. In your environment, it'd be called reassign. I've renamed mine to assign. And basically that means triaging it, I'm taking it, or I'm going to assign it to somebody else in the team. They can then triage a ticket if they're going to work on it. And I'm then going to say, I want to move this to in progress. I can then drag this over here. And as you can see, I now have stage one, stage two, and stage three. If you're wondering where I'm getting these, oh, it's going to bug out on me. This is a known bug with Halo PSA, by the way. Um, let me go ahead and just make this again. I'm just going to rename this very quickly to triage. And uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to delete that and make a new one. Allow actions of triage. Save. And I want to do triage. I want to move it to in progress. Save. Okay, cool. What I was trying to say is if you're wondering where I'm getting these stage names from, in the details, you can click edit and you can add in stages. Um, so I have stage one, two, three, which means on each step, I can then select the stage one, two, three. So now what we should be able to do is create a new ticket. I'm going to make it for William. I'm going to say YouTube test two. I'm going to say this is a technical ticket. This is a request to install a piece of software, Adobe Acrobat. I'm actually going to change it from request. I'm going to say it's an incident because that changes the ticket type. I have smart rules applied. I'm going to click submit. Because that is an incident ticket, that should now start the incident workflow. And as you can see, triage with a nice cloud is now at the top. When I click this, this is a quick action, so it doesn't make me do anything. But what it does is automatically assigns a ticket to William, which is who I'm logged in as right now and sets the status as acknowledged. If we scroll down here, you will see that it is assigned to William and the status is acknowledged and it is now in step two of the workflow and then has the buttons on it that I say are available at stage or step two in the workflow. And that is it. That is how to make a triage or a claim button in Halo PSA. And that is how to make it part of the workflow and hopefully improve your life a little bit when it comes to reporting on tickets and being able to say what tickets have we had in because you've captured the information at the start of the ticket. I've been Connor. Hope you have a lovely day. Any questions, put them in the comments below. Please do subscribe and like. I want to try and grow this channel as much as possible to help people out who are using Halo PSA. If you have any video ideas, please let me know. Anything you don't know, please put it down below. I've been Connor. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.